welcome back to Cowabunga Corner. On this episode, we're sitting here with Robbie Rist, who is the voice of Michelangelo in the three original movies. Thank you so much for joining us. It's great to be here. Come on, this is a this is an amazing thing you're doing. You know, well, I mean, it is. <laughs> I, I don't I don't know if I have this sort of dedication to anything. Uh, what inspired you to get into voice acting, doing the vocal work? Well, I wasn't inspired by it. I was with an agency that had a kids department. They had a print department, a commercial department, uh, which included voiceover, and a kids department. And whenever they needed kids for things, because I was, you know, just about 18 or something at the time, and uh, when they needed kids for something, they would go down to the kids department and send them up, and they would read all these voiceover things, and I started picking them up. And, and then I started picking more of them up, and they started sending me out on more stuff. And then I realized, how great is this job? It lasts a half hour. You know, they pay me, you know, whatever my rate is for it. And I can do, like, if I'm doing well, I can do a couple in a day. My, you know, it, it serves my ADD very well because, you know, I don't have to concentrate for any length of time. So I was like, yes, let's do this. And then, yeah, I kind of had a career at it for a while. You know, 20, I still do, 30 years, something like that. Yeah, are you still working on Naruto? Yeah, I'm on that. Um, I have a, a show coming out uh, uh, very shortly since we're since it's Valentine's Day. Oh, and uh, yeah, I, I think actually very shortly it's going to be airing on Disney Junior. I'm on a show called Doc McStuffins that's coming out. So uh, uh, it's a really cute uh, cartoon for people like three to five years old. It's about a girl who's a doctor for toys. And it just so happens whatever malady the toy has, a child could have it too. So like, you know, there's a, on a hot day, there's a fire truck that won't work because it's out of water. Well, on a hot day, you have to drink a lot of water or else you won't, you know, no one will want to play with you. So it's that kind of stuff. It's really cool. And I get to sing in it. And so yeah, so I got that, I got that. You know, I'm trying to, trying to weasel my way into the new Turtle movie, but we'll see how that goes. Bring him back! Yeah, He's bring me back for God's Start red antipathy tap, enter. Robbie, we <laughs> want Michelangelo, enter, dude. Mm -hmm. Speaking about Ninja Turtles, when did you first hear about it? Did you know before you worked on the movie? Oh, or? yeah. I knew about the Ninja Turtles probably in, like, 88. I was playing with this band from St. Louis, and uh, the lead singer was uh, a, a fan of the comic book. Uh, he was a big comic book fan anyway, you know. Uh, um, this is sort of, this is actually sort of pre-geek, you know what I mean? It was sort of pre, he was, he was one of those, you know, he, he, he was what most people would call a geek or a nerd or what, whatever that was. But uh, people who liked comic books didn't really have that sort of cachet yet, you know. But he had a lot of comic books. And uh, one of them he showed me was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and it was still in black and white. You know, it was pencil drawings, basically. Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh, yes. Yeah, large yeah, yeah. comics. Okay, yeah. And it was really grim and, and uh, dark, and they swore, and I was like, well, this is not your, you know, your little brother's comic book now, is it? And then I hear they're making a movie out of it, and I was unaware of the cartoon in between. So the movie is, is I hear that I'm going to read for it, and I'm like, they made a kid's movie out of that? Oh my gosh, th th uh, wow, because it's so violent and, you know, all of that. I didn't know about the cartoon. I didn't know they'd watered it down already. So I'm like, well, this should be interesting, I guess. This thing's going to go nowhere, you know. I'll be the only person on the planet that likes it, and, you know, just like everything else I like, it'll completely disappear. So I, you know, got the job, and uh, and then I, after I watched it, I kind of got it. But even at that, and people still talk about how the first one is a little more, a little edgier than the other. I mean, that second one is just a... Cartoon. Yes, the second one just like it's all bright colors and wee, you know. <laughs> when you got the role of Michelangelo, did they give you any voice clips or anything to listen to to come up with mm -hmm. the sound, or just no? Because all because you know they they were reimagining also, and uh, you know they they wanted a new turtles and all of that kind of hell. They reimagined the second one. If you listen to the uh, my vocal tone of the second movie, they made me pitch my voice way higher than on the first one. Yeah. I don't know if you've, it's, I, you know, I mean, it's subtle, probably. I mean, I notice it because I had to do it. But, yeah, they pitched my voice a little higher. I don't know, probably to aim it more at kids. I, I don't know. I kind of felt like going, hey, I did the first movie. That one did okay. Why don't you let me do my job? How about that? But <laughs> I'm not that sort of actor. I'm like, all right, man, whatever you want. It's all good. Yeah, yeah. You, okay. you showed interest in the original comics. Did you start picking them up yourself? No, not much. I've never, I've I'm not much of a comics guy just from a, it's just a time standpoint. I'm, you know, I'm so 
busy usually that to sort of have the have the leisure time to you know I mean I, I've become enamored of the Walking Dead comics in the last couple of years and that's probably the first comic book series ever that I've you know spent any time with and even that I'm, I think I have two or three issues that I still have yet to read you know just it's no time. There's too much stuff to do. Time. What's you know, that? I'm, yeah, I'm, a, I'm a freelance artist. For God's sakes, we don't we don't sit down for any length of time. <laughs> we're always. We're, it's true. You're just always like, all right, we're finished. As you're finishing that job, you're kind of going. Well, I should probably be looking for another one. You know. <laughs> so, uh -huh. uh, with Eastman and Laird, um, <laughs> one of the amazing things that's coming up for us fans is that. Kevin is being brought back on board after the Nickelodeon buyout as one of the writers for the new comic books. Uh huh. So okay. He's okay, but he's not on the he's not but he's not on the cartoon. Not the cartoon. Yeah, no, the cartoon that's, is uh, a whole new whole you know, new area. I don't know if I tr I don't know if I myself trust Nickelodeon with that property. I'm just saying. I could be wrong, and I'm willing to be proven wrong. Please, I love it when I'm wrong. One of my favorite, I want to be wrong about the new Turtle cartoon, but... They got some things that's got us going, what? Like uh, April O'Neil being a teenager. Um, that's the biggest what? Reimagining again. Thing. Um, but what has me sort of excited to see where they're going with it is the guy, one of the, the three main guys in charge is actually a big fan of the Ninja Turtle property. Mm -hmm. So he wants to try and keep some of the aspect to the Turtles mm -hmm. inside the series while still being able to make some changes. So we got to see where the changes mm -hmm. go and what stays with it before mm -hmm. I judge the series. Yeah, yeah, I like judging things before I see them because, you know, that just makes me look like an idiot every time. It's really great. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I was wrong. Damn. God. <laughs> so... With um, the the turtle movies, mm -hmm. when the CGI one was around, were what did you think when they were going from C live action to CGI? Well, I mean those things. The, I mean, well, first off, how great is it that again this thing that started as a weirdo little comic book is now thirty some years down the line, well twenty some years down the line is still it's still around. They're still making new versions of it. Um, but the other side of that is, uh, the, when the CG thing came up, I was like, you know, well, okay, you know, always my question is, did you make a movie? My question, you know, I, ultimately, I don't care if you do it with, you know, stick figures and, you know, like popsicle sticks with cotton on top of them, like, hey, we're turtles, you know, as long as there's a real story there. And from what I understood, from what a lot of people said, you know, it was okay. The, I don't know why they don't let fans write the stories. You know, just go to, you know, make a f find five huge turtle fans from you know boards or whatever. Maybe they could even oh say hire you. And uh, and you know at least have you kind of come in and go. You know what? To me, my ultimate. Well, how about this? What like what would be your ultimate turtle movie? Like, let's say you, you were going to sit down in the theater and an hour and a half later you were going to walk out going, oh my God, that, that, was, that was it. That was amazing. I really don't know what my ultimate would be. It, it have to have all the, char all the turtles involved in the storyline, right. not just one being picked out as comic relief, but mm -hmm. each of them having their own story mm -hmm. that collides with each other. Mm -hmm. uh, having the equal amount of treatment through the movie, too. Mm -hmm. I am tired of characters like Donatello in almost all the movies has taken the back seat and he's a fantastic turtle mm -hmm. he's we get the cartoons where they're able to they got the time to give each turtle their own episodes but the movies don't have always the time to mm -hmm. give each of the turtles their own story, story. Yeah. and every freaking turtle movie concentrates on Leo and Raph has to have a conflict right and We've seen it. Mm -hmm. We've seen it in the comics. We've seen it in the cartoons. We've seen it in the movies. Mm -hmm. And the last Turtle movie, the CGI movie, was all about Leonardo and Raph mm -hmm. having a huge fight. Mm -hmm. And a, a physical fight on the rooftop. See? I hope you people are so, listening. This is what you should be listening to. Now, with your work on the Turtle movie, um, you, did you 
work with the different directors each time? Because yeah, there yeah. was... Well, um, there was a different... I didn't work with Steve Barron. I don't think I worked with the, di the directors on any of them. I think they had a voiceover director. So, I'm, at least I'm pretty sure that's what I remember. Because I think I would have... Because I was, you know... I remember being a fan of Steve Barron. I forget what movie it was from at the time. Was it Razorback? I don't remember. But, uh, yeah, so, I, yeah, I never got to work with any of the directors. Hell, I never got to meet, you know, I never even get to meet Mike Sisti. I, you know, I've, you know, I go in, I do my little lines in a couple of days, and movie comes out, you know, then, you know, then you call me, you know. <laughs> hey, nice job. Thank you. Uh, yeah, that's the, uh, it's a, the voiceover part of that job is very insular. It's just sort of like you, you know, a podium, a little light on it, microphone, watching them, you know, watching the movie. You know, doing all of that, and then trying to trying to make a performance out of a performance that's already there, because you know the puppeteers actually do the lines. Yeah. And so their lip flaps are sort of their lines that they're doing, and it's kind of weird because the guy who did my voice, you know, or did Michael, you know, Mikey's voice anyway, um, it didn't really do a surfer thing the first time out. So I had to kind of like you hear his voice in your ear while you're doing your lines and trying to match up with the lips that are moving. And, uh, yeah, it was very challenging. You know, I was going to, you know, if I ever met him, I'd be like, the hell was that about? Come on. Well, you didn't grow up in the valley? Everybody's, dude, everybody talks that way here. You know, it's like, you know, our my generation of people from the valley invented that, that, that surf speak. That, that all the guys I went to high school with, it, like... For me, Michelangelo isn't acting. I, I'm just, I'm just doing all the guys I went to high school with. So like when I read for the, the show, you know, for the first movie, I was just like, surf guy, no problem. You know, not even acting. You know, sort of like you know, sort of like Michael J. Fox. He doesn't act either. He just sort of does Michael J. Fox. They did actually take that <laughs> surf guy thing from the original cartoon series, since the comic yes, did yes, not yes, have that. Yes. Yes. That was yeah. written by David Wise into the cartoon series. He had the word Kalabunga, and Townsend Coleman, the first voice yeah. for Mike, yeah. picked up on that. And David was so impressed on how well Townsend did no. with taking that character. Because Townsend's a genius. Townsend's like, a lot of the guys that were on that first thing, Townsend, Rob Paulson, I mean, these guys are, they're the, such big guns as far as voiceover goes. There's, I say all the time that, Voiceover is the hardest acting you can do because in most cases, you, in regular conversation, you use your face and your hands as well as your voice. So like, you know, your body posture says a lot about what you're saying and all of that kind of stuff. So to get the, the intent, you know, to get the point of a line across to somebody without looking at their face or their hands is really challenging. That's a really hard thing to do. And Rob and Townsend are so good at it. They're such talented dudes. Amazing. Yeah. Why do I suck so bad? You don't suck. Yeah. We like your work. The whole thing. Never mind. I don't want to talk. Have you got to meet them? I, well, we see. We know each other from voiceover. I mean, I see them. On, you know, we used to see each other in auditions all the time. And then at a, after a certain point, I mean, Townsend did the cartoon, but he also became the voice of NBC comedy. You know, so you know, yeah. tonight on Frasier, you know, he became that guy. And... Uh, uh, that isn't a good Townsend Coleman, by the way. That wasn't fair. <laughs> I wasn't trying to say that. Just, just so we know. Um, and and Rob, I, I think Rob is uh, like the voice of Toyota or something. He does... Uh, uh, Mr. Opportunity. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he's Mr. Opportunity. Yeah, and uh, so, you know, I mean, those are like, you know, that's like, I just watched rocket ships take off in the distance. I mean, those are, you know... Big jobs, you know, they don't have to do auditions anymore now, you know. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, we used to see each other all the time, just on stuff. Yeah, you know, I probably, I mean, Brian Tochi, I've known that guy forever. I, I know, you know, Corey and I have known each other since we were kids. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was yeah. another question I was going to ask if you knew the other voice actors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the movie. Yeah, we know. I mean, we all auditioned together, and you know, I mean, there's. Turtles wasn't the only thing you're ever up reading for, you know yeah. what I mean? So whenever there's a commercial or whatever, you know, I mean, what's his name? 
Jess Harnell. Do you know who Jess Harnell is? Yes. The British Animaniac. Wacko. Wacko, yeah. He, uh, you know, I see him on stuff all of the time, and he's a Transformer now, and you know what I mean? He's in those movies. He, he's got a very nice house. Oh. Yeah, he has a very nice house. Transformer money. That's like total mail. <laughs> that's like mailbox money where you like open it up and you go, Yes! <laughs> awesome! Thank you! <laughs> Michael Bay. <laughs> uh, yeah, about Jess, but you know, we see each other at auditions all the time. Have you ever got the chance to watch any of the Turtle cartoons or other series? Um, I've seen, you know, maybe just episodes, you know, here and there, but not really. Not really. I mean, definitely by the time the, you know, the cartoon was on, it was a little past my time for, for cartoons. Although it's funny, I guess now I'm kind of back into them, but you know. <laughs> So if it would come out now, I'd be like, all right, turtles, cool. Um, but, you know, at that time, I'm like, I'm too old for cartoons, you know. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I haven't watched much of that. I, You know, the CG one came and went. Uh, at some point, I'll probably check it out, you know, but, uh, you know, Netflix or what have you. But, uh, you know, I don't know. There's other movies to watch, and, you know, there's only so much time in the day. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm only... You know, I would say I'm only so much a, a, a real Turtles fan. Also, be, not so much, I think, because of content, but I think because I'm in it. You know, it's sort of hard to be... I, I don't see it from the outside the way you do. Well, I don't think you see it from the outside anymore either. But for a long time, you did. You know what I mean? It was something that you saw, and it was... It was that. You know what I mean? Turtles! Yeah, where, where <laughs> if, you're, if you kind of... Are in the process. If if you're involved in the process of making something, you have a completely different viewpoint of it. You know, I get that from the Brady Bunch thing all the time. You know, they're just sort of like, "Was it great being on the Brady Bunch?" Yeah, I mean, I was on it. Like, but I, I don't have that same kind of like, "Oh my God, I used to stay home on Fridays and watch the Brady Bunch every week." <laughs> and I didn't. I was probably just coming home from work then. You know. <laughs> Speaking about the Brady's and stuff. You've done a lot of other work. Is there yeah. any work you'd like to share with our viewers that uh, either they don't know about or that's coming up that you think they would enjoy? Well, the Doc McStuffins thing, that's coming up. Um, and then, uh, you know, I'm on a, I got the, the, some video game or another that I did recently, and that's coming out. Uh, I don't remember what it is right now. It's such a good promoter. <sighs> no wonder my career is where it is. Um... Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I look at my IMDb page. You know, it's 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 not complete, but it's pretty extensive. You know, there's. I mean, I I popped up on a lot of weird stuff. Most of my on camera works from you know the seventies and eighties, but uh, uh, you know, once voiceover took over, I mean, uh, Balto, I was in that. You know, that uh, with the Anna Amblin yes. thing about sled dogs. It's really cute. Actually, kind of makes me cry. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, I've done a lot of stuff. I. It, off the top of my head, I just go, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I know I did it. I just don't remember what it is at the moment. Uh, yeah, just look, I know at my, look at my IMDb page and kind of go, oh, he does that. I do a lot of music, too. Go on the YouTubes and just look up my name, Robbie Rest, all this kind of stuff will come up. Someone posted something on your Facebook where my jaw just dropped because I used to watch it when I was a kid, and I had no clue you were connected to it, and that was Kid Video. And I just into it. I was in it. Yeah, I yeah. had no clue about oh, that. Oh, really? I, I didn't know it was you because I watched it when I was really, really sure. little. I haven't seen it in years. Mm -hmm. And then when I saw it on your page, I'm like, wait a second. There's a couple of episodes that are, again, up on YouTube. You can check them out. Yeah. Um, I've been kind of, not kind of, I've been lucky in that every decade, pretty much, I've done something that kind of hit the cultural zeitgeist, you know? Like, you know, in the 70s, it was the Brady Bunch. Um, the kid video thing, I thought, had completely disappeared and fallen off the radar, but in the last six or seven years, I've been getting all kinds of emails, and people put, there's two kid video sites out there, you know, there's people who are into this thing still, and they're still talking about it, and I go, that's... Amazing! I, you know, that's so crazy. And then the turtle thing. I mean, that's that. The, talk about legs. Jeez. Turtles never got to completely fall. There's always been a fan that yeah. even when nothing was coming well, out. Yeah. Um. <laughs> um. 
I used to date somebody who was a bit younger than me, and uh, she said uh, that, uh, you know, should we ever break up? She goes, if you ever want to, like, you know, get all the young chicks you want, just, like, go to a college town where, you know, somebody's around 25 and start doing your Michelangelo thing, and, you know, that's going to pull chicks. And aside from the fact that I went, that's a really weird piece of information to give me. Um, <laughs> but... But there is still there is still a whole new generation of people that are always discovering this thing and and you know totally getting it. Now you have parents that are kind of going, you're about Here, the watch right this. yeah you're about the right age. Check this out. You know that's so it yeah it, it's it's perpetual. It keeps going on and keeps going on. I think that's, I mean you know I'm so lucky to be involved in something that that happens. Yeah. You know yeah but yeah. Awesome. Being part of the solution, not part of the problem. It's good. <laughs> so, is there anything you would like to say to your fans who are watching this? Um, hey, thanks. I, I can't believe we're still talking about this. You know, I've been on a bunch of stuff that, you know, I did it and I was like, oh, this is great. This is going to be around forever. <laughs> Nothing, you know. And, uh, and we're still talking about it. And I think that's a, really, that's a really cool thing. And, you know, I'm totally findable if you want to write me or whatever. You know, Facebook and... I, I just sit around here all day. It's just like what I do. You know? Usually it's alone, though. That Michelle was nice enough to come and hang out with me for a while. Mostly just me on the couch going like this. You know, panicking, that kind of thing. I'm joking. I'm really not that way. I'm so busy all of the time. Yeah, all of a sudden, Michelle was like, Oh, Robbie, are you okay? I'm fine. Uh, I, I I'm know fine. Like, Don't worry. Completely busy lately. When I'm like, hey, you got time to do something? No, oh, no, yeah. no. I'm busy. Yeah. Well, this so. week I'm I'm doing I think twelve music gigs or something. So there's a lot going on, a lot of stuff to learn, and all that stuff. That's mostly what I you know. I'm always doing something. Actually, I never sit on the couch and just freak out. It never <laughs> happens. Usually, it's in the car in between rehearsals. <laughs> ah! But that's about it. Okay, next time on Cowabunga Corner, we're going to talk about that crazy autographed t-shirt you've seen me hold up in many different videos. And I was wondering if you would say Cowabunga to the camera for Cowabunga Corner. Cowabunga Corner. <laughs>